welcome to my tie shader tutorial. In this video I will show you how to add some imperfections to your tires to make them look even more realistic. Again we will start with our car which we have imported from the transportation add-on. You can also use a different tire or a different car but if you want to buy the add-on and support me please use the referral link in the description. Last time we customized the paint. This time we will take care of the tires. We have already added some imperfections to the paint that you might be able to see in some places here. The first thing that I did here is to add these imperfections to the tires as well. Here on the brake disc and the rim. You can also see that I simply copied these nodes down here, which are also in the paint shader, and then connected them to the roughness socket. So we have already got a few more details on the brakes and the rims. But now we want to adjust the rubber of our tires. This is the normal texture from the transportation add-on for the tires. They look okay for animations where the car is moving or you can only see them in the distance, but if you need a few more details or you look at the tires and think that something is missing to make them look even better, then this might be the reason. I will show you how to add more detail with a few simple techniques. When a tire like this spins, it runs over the ground and naturally collects dust. Here we have these little gaps. In these small little gaps the dirt would of course not stick so strongly, but would rather be distributed up here on the top and not in these little gaps. So how to mask out these little gaps here? It's quite simple. First we need an ambient occlusion node for this. If we display this here we can already see that we have actually masked the gaps here. We activate local and drag the distance a little further down. To control the mask we use a color ramp again. It comes in between here. Now we connect the mask with another one. To do this we first need a mix node and a gradient node. We leave the gradient node on linear and again use a color ramp for the control. If we display this now we can see that we have this gradient here. In the case of the tire there would be naturally more dirt on the surface that runs over over the ground and not on the side of the tire. So we mask this by simply dragging the white a little more into the middle, setting a new point here and dragging it outwards and make it black. Now we can already see that we have this gradient here. The tire is darker on the outside and lighter in the middle. Now we want this gradient to only be visible on the surface and not in the little gaps. So we want to mix this gradient with the ambient occlusion mask. We use a mix color node for this and put it here. You can use a mix color node directly or simply use a mix node and switch to color. Connect this node with the gradient to the lower socket and use the ambient occlusion node as a factor. At the top we select the color of the tire, in our case black. We use the gradient and the ambient occlusion node to mix in the dirt. It is black in the gaps and slightly lighter on the surface of the tire. So we make the color a little darker here and I think that looks pretty good already. Now we combine the mix color node with our base node and the principal BSCF node with the material output. Let's make the color a little lighter again and like this it looks pretty good. We don't need any special mapping for the gradient and ambient occlusion node, so let's leave it without an input. This way the mapping is generated and we don't have to unwrap anything. So now we have already the dirt and the abrasion on our tires. What we want to do next with the tire is to add streaks. When a car is driving, the surface of the road is sometimes a little wet or even has some puddles. And this would cause streaks. That means the tire would be a little more wet. However, the wetness would not be evenly distributed. That's why we can simply reduce the roughness value on our principal BSDF node. Otherwise, it wouldn't look good. We do this with the noise texture instead. If we now display this noise texture here on the tire, we can already see this pattern. The darker the texture, the more reflective it is. Black is a roughness value of 0 and white is 1. To make this look more like streaks, we need a mapping node here. We create this and simply use the generated coordinates here too. If we added the scale values below, the noise texture is changing. The tire rotates while driving, so wet spots were a little bit longer, like here. We can already connect and control these streaks with the color ramp. Now we can see these streaks and can adjust them a little if necessary. You can see that the tire reflects more strongly in some places and less in others. 
You may not be able to see it so well here now, depending on the light of course. Maybe we change the scale of our texture and make it bigger so we don't have these small spots here. With the color ramp we increase the contrast by pulling these points closer together. There's already quite a lot of reflection down here, which is a bit too much. So we need a lighter color than black for our color ramp here. Some areas reflect more strongly and others less. We stretch the noise texture earlier because the tire rotates and this would create a different shape for the reflections. So now we have already our streaks on the tires. What we are going to do next on our tires are these small bumps. The rubber would drop off while driving and this would create bumps. The tire would no longer be perfectly smooth as it is right now. For this we also need another noise texture. Let's move it here and display it. We now need this noise texture to be relatively small. We now also connect it to a mapping node and this time use object mapping so that we have an even distribution. Object mapping changes the size of the noise texture a lot. I think 0.1 is enough. I will now connect the noise texture to a bump node. For the bump node we take the factor of the noise texture for the height socket and connect it to the principal BSDF shader. The bumps on the tire are there, but they are still far too strong. So we reduce the intensity and get slightly lighter bumps. Next we also want to use this texture for the sidewall. It's included in the shader from the transportation add-on. If you don't have the add-on, you can of course also find these textures on the internet. We also want to mix them with the noise texture node here. Again, we use a mix color node and leave it on mix. The sidewall is placed in the upper socket, so A, and the noise texture in B, the lower one. Now we select the result of the mix node as the height. This means that in this bump node we now have the mixture of our noise texture and our sidewall texture here. If we want to control this now, for example the strength, we can do this here. If we want to edit the strength ratio between the sidewall and the noise node, then we change the factor of the mix node. Let's display the shader. I think we need to change the settings a little bit. First we need to increase the strength a little. Now we can clearly see the texture of the sidewall and slowly add these bumps. Now we can increase the strength here again, probably 0.3. That looks pretty good already. We can adjust the specular value on the principal BSDF node to make it look a little darker. The surface of the tire is still a little too light, so we make it a little darker too. And then we actually have a pretty good tire already. At the end we also want to use the normal map here. For this we also use a noise texture so we can duplicate the one above. These bumps should be even smaller than those for the bump node. So we set the scale value a little higher. Let's see how it looks. As you can see, the bumps will be much smaller. To use the noise node as a normal map, we have to convert it first. We do this with a separate color node and a combined color node. And then we select the noise texture as the color input. We connect red to red, green to green and set blue to one. If we display this now, we can see that it looks like a normal map that we can use for the normal map node. We put this in here and connect this normal map to our bump node. Now we display the principal BSDF node again and also see the small bumps, which look a bit like scratches or imprints. On the normal map node we change the intensity and make the effect stronger or weaker. I don't make it too strong and only want to see the effect very slightly. We can of course play around a bit with these settings here. Depending on how exactly you see the tire, you can add further imperfections, for example more dirt, dust, scratches, stains or something like that. If you have any further questions or would like tutorials on other topics, please write to me in the comments. I hope you were able to learn a few things again and see you next time.